Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. It seems there are concerted efforts to ensure that anybody who has got dissenting voice, apart from that of the government, must be silenced. And that is why we have got a lot of abductions and torture. Now, this morning, renowned activist Boniface Mwangi was abducted. This is after complaints of missing persons, unaccounted missing people that we don't understand their whereabouts. And as people continue making noise, there are more abductions and torture. Now, it is revealed to us that in as much as abductions are themselves unconstitutional, that the people carrying out these abductions are not only from the elite squad that has been formed by this government, but also getting reinforcement from the, 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 the neighboring East African countries. And this is very pathetic. The saddest news that we can receive as a country, because at the time when things like Adan deal are going on and unpopular policies, the government understands that people will run to the street. So what, they, what, are, what are they doing? They are silencing and intimidating any loud voices that can question any misbehavior, wastage and corruption within the government. This morning, Martha Karwa led a group of activists and they condemned the abductions because for immediate press release, Kenyans united to resist oppression. And it says that enough is enough. Stop the killings, abductions, and torture of innocent Kenyans. And he says, we condemn in the strongest terms possible this morning's abduction of renowned human rights defender Bodifes Mwangi from his Kenya home, Machakos County. A man who has courageously dedicated his life to defending the rights and freedoms of all Kenyans. Accounts from his wife indicate he was abducted in the presence of his children early Sunday morning by three men and one woman believed to be police officers and who are not in uniform. The abductors did not identify themselves or say why and where they were taking Mr. Mwangi. These kidnappings disappearances and extrajudicial killings targeted on our children and likely Kenya's innocent youth is now a signature modus parendi of the Ruto regime. These abductions and killings of our youth is now a worrying trend that must stop forthwith. He continues to say that it has now become the signature modus operandi of the Ruto regime and these unconstitutional abductions have since the Gen Z protest resulted in lengthy illegal detentions like in the case of Bob Njagi and the Langton brothers Aslam and Jamil or death in the case of many who included the university student leader Denzel Omondi who was murdered and body recovered in a quarry or the more recent abduction and the murder of John Njoguna Kuria of Kapenguria, whose burial was two days ago. These are dark reminders of the regime's determination to silence dissent. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to pay attention to this because I'm not going to read the whole of it. This paragraph says that credible sources indicate the abduction squads consisting of officers from the army and the police, mainly from Dr. William Ruto's ethnic group, with foreigners possibly drawn from Burundi, Uganda, and Congo, are part of these squads housed at Karen, near the DP residence, and Olepolos in Kajado, a regime that finds it necessary to form a squad outside the official channels for terrorizing and murdering its citizens is a regime without any moral authority to govern and needs to be forced out of power.
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to read the whole of this document. But what caught my attention is that the abduction squad consists of sadly mainly policemen and army. Look at that, the army. Mainly from Ruto's ethnic group, the Kalenjin. So we have reached a point where the abduction is taking place using the army. The army that is supposed to be protecting us from external aggression is now part and parcel of the abduction. And then even to make it worse that we have the army from the neighborhood, Uganda, Congo, and Burundi. How cruel can a president be if this is true? You know, when William Ruto took oath of office, he swore to protect and defend our constitution and protect the nation. We are going back to the darkest days that this one is even worse. Because ever since the Gen Z protest, we saw people, you know, masquerading as policemen, traveling ambulances, traveling in masks, they've they, they masked their faces so that you can't see them. Now we are being told that there are foreigners who are infiltrating this squad and they're abducting people, torturing them, killing them, detaining them. Do you remember William Ruto had said that the era of killing people and throwing them into Ribayala had ended and they told us that freedom is here. And this is because there are several things happening. Corruption, as I've said, wastage, you know, things like Adani deal, they know that people will question them. And with the broad-based government, William Ruto knows that things are going to be worse than they were. And so he's preparing that there are people who even want to wake up and question. And he wants to silence. He wants to intimidate. He wants to instill fear so that people don't talk. And this is a battle that is choreographed and it is going step by step. Once they've started with the activists, then you will see they will start curtailing the freedom of speech, freedom of movement. Then before you know it, it will be, they will descend on journalists because what they are blocking and trying to avert is dissemination of any of, of, of the right to information. So that when they have instilled fear, the national televisions and radio stations and even the print media will not be giving the correct information. Because if they, were, they are cowed into submission, then they will start writing or reporting things that praise William Samai Ruto. The foreigners are being used because once they abduct and kill, one, you will not identify, you will not follow them and find. Because if there are officers from a certain police station, then you can easily find out. But this seems to be an elite squad, a killer squad that has been formed. Once they come and they are masked and they have foreigners within them, you cannot identify them. So they are, they are trying to hide their identity and you cannot search for them and find them. This is the time that Kenyans must rise up because if Kenyans are going to be quiet, it is over. People must protect our constitution. People fought hard, some paid by their blood. And so if we want to go back to the dark days, it is going to backfire on us. It is going to coming back. If we allow the country to degenerate to the darkest days, it will take us years to fight and come back again to this constitution, the right of picketing, the right to speech, the right to life, you know, the right of association. This is what they're trying to curtail. And it is going to be a rogue regime like Barak Muluka once described that indeed this is a rogue regime. If we don't join people like Martha Karua to, you know, to condemn this in the strongest term possible, it is going to be, to be bad. This is one of the saddest news, in fact, the saddest news that we can receive. And this government, if not checked, then we are going to have an accounted, an accounted lives lost, torture, and killings. 
Mata Karu and the group are just whistleblowers. Let us be our brother's keeper. Otherwise, if we are not careful, we are all going to perish together.